Dear Phil, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. I find that I cannot go on like this. Ever since you caught me cheating six months ago, we have been living a lie. We told each other that we would stay together to try to rebuild our marriage, but this has not happened. I cannot live like this any longer. I have found an apartment so we can each take the time to consider whether we are willing to make the effort needed to save our marriage. I have come to accept the sad fact that I may have destroyed our marriage beyond repair. It has taken me a long time, but I now believe that, unless things change drastically, there is no way that we can ever get back to the happy marriage we had before. I am leaving to give you an opportunity to do the soul searching that I have done. I know I lost your love and trust. I need you to decide if there is any way that I can ever regain it. Ever since you caught me in bed with Jeff on that trip last September, I have tried to do what I can to rebuild our love and your trust. To the outside world and all of our friends, I have kept up the pretense that nothing is wrong, that we remain a happy couple and I am your loving wife. I have tried to do what I can to make your time as pleasant as possible. I accepted your mistrust and questioning of what I am doing as a natural consequence of my actions. While unhappy, I did not complain when you told me to move into the guest bedroom. I have tried to give you the space and time you needed to get over my betrayal, while still remaining there for you both physically and emotionally. On those occasions when you have sought physical release, I have provided you with you know what as often as you have wanted and have refused you nothing. I have tried to show you both by my actions and my words that I am sorry and wanted with all of my heart to make it up to you. I did all this because I wanted desperately for you to forgive me so we could rebuild our lives. I knew I was wrong and selfish and had destroyed our marriage. I hoped that over time, you would see my efforts and join me in the process of healing the hole in the middle of our life. But this has not happened. I cannot continue to live as your wife without your love and trust. The fact that I cheated and betrayed you gives you ample reason to divorce me. It does not give you reason to control and destroy the rest of my life. I have told you that I am sorry. I have tried to discuss the matter with you and you refused to discuss it. I suggested that we seek counseling and you refused. We cannot pretend that nothing happened. If we are to get beyond this you need to gain some understanding of why I acted like I did. But you remain close to me. When we first talked about my affair, the one question you wanted me to answer was why. You told me that you needed to know why I had had thrown away our marriage and our love. At that time, I wasn't able to give you an answer that you could understand. All I tried to do was justify my actions and evade the consequences of what I had done. I couldn't explain it to you because I didn't really know why myself. Over the past six months, your question of why has haunted me. At night, I lie awake trying to answer that question for myself. I have finally gotten to the point where I have a better understanding of why the affair started. I accept full responsibility for my actions. I acted like a fool and destroyed the things that meant more to me than anything else, your love and our marriage. I have constantly thought about what I did and why. I realize now that you may never be able to forgive me nor will I ever be able to forgive myself. But in order for both of us to move on with our lives, either together or apart, I need you to know that I finally understand the pain and suffering that I caused. I was the worst type of hypocrite. Throughout our marriage I made it clear to you that I could not accept it if you were unfaithful to me. I shunned those who had betrayed their spouses in any way. I was unwilling to forgive them or to even associate with them. I felt there was no excuse for that type of behavior. Now, I understand that my view was overly simplistic. I still believe cheating is wrong, even mine. But when you discovered my affair, I was hoping that you could give me what I was never able to give to others, compassion and forgiveness. I have come to realize that in a moment of weakness everyone is capable of making mistakes. It does not excuse the action, but if the love is strong enough, hopefully the mistake can be overcome. But, forgiveness must be earned. It was not enough for me to tell you that I am sorry. In order for you to be able to forgive me, you must know that I am aware of the pain that my actions caused. You must also know that I have discovered why I acted in such a self-destructive fashion so that it will never happen again. You must believe that I am sorry not only for the consequences of my actions, but also for the actions themselves. This has been painful for me because when I examine my actions closely, I realize that while this affair was going on, I was not a very nice person. I did not think of you or our marriage, I only thought about myself. I am sorry to admit that I began to take our love and our marriage for granted. I lost focus on what was truly important and grew complacent in our love. When we first got married, I gloried in the fact that you were not only my husband and lover, but you were my best friend. Every action that we took was made with a focus on how it would affect our marriage and love. We talked over everything and we made every decision together. But, over time, somehow we lost that closeness. Maybe it was lost because we thought that we knew each other so well we could predict how the other one would act. 
We each started to make decisions without consulting the other. I still considered you my best friend, but I lost track of what that meant. I began to forget the reasons why we had become best friends. I became so convinced that nothing could shake our love for each other that I put my own desires ahead of our love. In short, I grew selfish. I did not set out to betray you. You did nothing wrong and gave me no reasons to look for sex anywhere else. My affair began not because of a desire for something better or something more, but because of a moment's weakness. I was lonely and feeling sorry for myself. You will recall that my affair began when we were both swamped with work. We stopped making time for each other, and we were spending a lot of time apart. When you phoned me to say that you would not make it back in time from your business trip to see me before I left for the convention in March, I lost it. I was vulnerable, feeling incredibly sorry for myself and extremely frustrated sexually. You had been away on your trip for two long weeks, and I had been looking forward to making love to you the night before I left. When you did not make it home, I felt cheated of my pleasure. It was my bad luck to run into Jeff at the convention. You know that Jeff and I had dated before you and I met. What you may not know is that, for a time, I was in a very serious relationship with Jeff and had even talked of marriage. We broke up when we discovered that our connection was based more on physical attraction than on a love for one another. I accepted Jeff's invitation to dinner because I was lonely and needed a friend. Over dinner, Jeff made me remember why I had been attracted to him. He is fun to be with and can be very attentive when he is seeking companionship. As the night went on, Jeff took me to the hotel bar for a few drinks and dancing. I know now that it was stupid, but I ended up telling Jeff about how frustrated I was feeling because you had not made it home. Like a fool, I let Jeff know that I was ripe for seduction. I do not want you to think that I am trying to blame Jeff for my actions. Yes, Jeff did take the initiative. Yes, Jeff was the one who asked me if I would go to his room with him, but I have no excuse. While he initiated it, I did not do what I should have done to discourage him. I knew what would happen when I agreed to go back to his room. I knew that there was a good chance that I would get F, and to be honest, I was excited by the idea. I'm sorry to admit this, but my decision was based partly on my memory of his skill as a lover. I was aroused and I knew that he could give me what I needed to relieve my frustration. I agreed to have it with Jeff with full knowledge of what I was doing. I knew that I was cheating on you but told myself that it did not matter because you would never find out and it was a one-time occurrence. I told myself that it was just sexual release and meant nothing. I deluded myself and let own selfishness take over. Please do not believe that my affair was in any way caused by my dissatisfaction with you as a lover. You are an incredible and considerate lover that gives me anything that I can desire. You are better than Jeff is. But he was there and you were not and I let my own selfish desire for release overrule my judgment. I betrayed you, not once but many times over. Maybe you would have forgiven me if I had ended it after that one night. Maybe then, I could have forgiven myself. I know it is not much, but at least I had the excuse of my frustration and my long-time attraction to Jeff. I did feel guilty for betraying you when I finally got back to my room that first night and vowed not to let it happen again. But over the course of the next few days, my guilt was overwhelmed by my memory of what Jeff had given me. I minimized my guilt by thinking that I was not hurting you. I thought only of my pleasure and finally decided that I would get together with Jeff again if he asked me. I can find no explanation for my actions for the rest of that week. When he asked me out to dinner on the third day of the conference, I knew what he was expecting. Despite this, I willingly agreed to go out to dinner and gladly went with him back to his room to spend the night. I found myself spending more time with him as the week went on. I was selfish and thought only of my own pleasure. I was not in love with Jeff and was only using him for my own self-gratification. I am ashamed to admit that, once I saw Jeff the second time, I stopped feeling guilty. I was not thinking of you or our marriage at all. I am sorry to say that I betrayed you, our marriage and myself. Yes, we did talk on the phone that week and I knowingly lied to you. I would tell you how bored I was and how lonely I felt, even though I knew I was meeting Jeff later that night. I kept on telling myself that I was not hurting you because you were 2,000 miles away and would never find out. It was not until I saw you at the airport that I realized what I'd done. I panicked and almost confessed my infidelity to you. But you welcomed me with open arms and told me how much you missed me. Yes, I felt guilty, but even then I continued my betrayal. I justified my actions in my own mind and made myself believe that my affair did not really hurt you because it happened while I was away. I told myself that it wasn't like I had cheated on you at home. After all, I wasn't taking time away from you to spend time with Jeff. I never once thought how I badly I would have been hurt if you had done the same to me on one of your trips. I justified my failure to confess by thinking it was for the good of our marriage. 
After all, I loved you and would only hurt you for no reason if I confessed. I promised that I would make it up to you by being a loving wife from that point on. Looking back, I can't believe how self-serving and selfish that I was. My actions were not for you or us. They were only for me. Please understand that I now regret every one of my actions bitterly because of the hurt that it caused to you and to our marriage. I promised myself that my involvement with Jeff was over. I vowed never to cheat on you again. When Jeff first contacted me by email after the convention, I didn't know what to do. I was flattered that he wanted to see me again, but I was also determined not to let it happen. I knew that it could only hurt our marriage. But I wasn't strong enough to tell Jeff to leave me alone and eventually found myself responding to his emails. At first, Jeff's emails were seemingly innocent. He told me how nice it had been to spend time with me at the convention. But over time, they began to change. He started to tell me how he wanted to get together with me again, and he got very explicit in describing what he wanted to do to me. His interest did excite me and flatter me and I began to respond by asking him what else he wanted to do. In my selfishness, I continued to betray you by what could only be considered a cyber affair. I found that I got an illicit thrill from the cyber life I shared with Jeff. I continued to get in deeper over my head. When I got scared you might find out, I didn't stop what I was doing, I just tried to cover my tracks. I tried to justify my correspondence with Jeff by rationalizing that it meant nothing. After all, he was on the other coast and all we were doing was exchanging emails. I told myself that all I was doing was improving our personal life. As a result of the emails, I was more aroused than I had been in years and you were getting the benefit of it by better and more frequent loving. I told myself that I loved you and my actions weren't hurting our marriage. But looking back at my actions, I have come to realize that my love for you was not as strong as my love for myself. If I had loved you as much as I thought, I would not have continued. I would have understood that whether or not you were aware of what was happening, I was hurting you every time I responded to Jeff. I also would have been more concerned for how much this would hurt you when you eventually found out. It was only after it was all over that I finally realized how foolish I had become. I told myself that I was only thinking of you when we made love, but I now know that I was only trying to justify my actions. My rationalizations did not and cannot excuse my actions. My continuing contact with Jeff can only be considered a betrayal of you and our marriage. I now understand why you felt that my actions humiliated you. I understand the anger and pain you felt when you realized that your wife felt it necessary to live a second secret life. For the pain that I caused to you, I will be forever sorry. When Jeff found out that I was scheduled to speak at the convention in September, he immediately made plans to attend and told me that he wanted to pick up where we had left off. I did try to resist and told him that it would not happen. I knew that if I did meet with him, I was descending a slippery slope that could only lead to disaster. But, he continued to push me down and tried to convince me that we weren't hurting you if we got together only during the conventions. When I left for that convention, I honestly did not know what would happen. I promised myself that would avoid Jeff and nothing would happen. I thought about cancelling my speaking engagement. I tried to get you to come so you could protect me from my own weakness. When you told me that you could not get the time off from work, I was worried that I could not resist Jeff when I saw him. Deep down I think that I went to that convention fully expecting that I would be with Jeff. Even my worries were not the actions of a wife who loved her husband, for if they were, I would have explained to you why I did not want to go to the convention alone. My actions were that of a weak, selfish person who was worried that she could not control her own desires. I know now that you knew of my affair long before I left for the September convention. You began to suspect something when you caught me lying to you about where I was during the convention last March. You found my emails to Jeff and you knew that he would be at the convention. You knew that he wanted to see me again and you knew that my resistance to him was weak. You must have known that you might catch me in his arms. You flew out to the convention not to stop me, but to watch me. You wanted to discover whether I would meet up with Jeff. You were there that second night when Jeff finally caught up to me and convinced me to have dinner with him. You even called me on my cell phone to find out if I would lie to you about where I was. You watched him get me drunk and get me aroused as we danced. You saw us leave the bar and go up to his room. He then waited before coming up to confront us so we would have time to get undressed. To be honest, I am glad that Jeff refused to let you into the room when you knocked on the door demanded that he let you in. As soon as I heard your voice, I knew that I was caught. I knew that you would not believe Jeff if he told you that I was not there. But I didn't want you to see me like I was. By the time you started to pound on the door, we were both undressed and Jeff had already begun to F me. I knew that if you had come in and seen me like that it would have broken your heart. I was also afraid that you would have gotten violent. Jeff was also afraid of what you might do. He wanted to call hotel security, but I would not let him do so. 
I could hear the anger and pain in your voice as you pounded on the door and I knew that I was the cause. It was clear that you knew I was there. So, I told Jeff to admit it. But, I asked him to try to stall you. I wanted to get dressed before he opened the door. Maybe I thought that I might still be able to fool you if we could get dressed fast enough. I am sorry that I did not call out to you, but I was in shock. All I could think was that my worst nightmares had come true and that you had found out. When I finally got dressed and opened the door, you had already gone. I did try to catch you before you left, but I did not know where you were staying. I ran to my room in the hopes that you might have gone there, but all I found was the note you had left telling me that you wanted a divorce. All I could think of was getting home as quickly as possible to try to convince you otherwise. This brings me to my final act of betrayal. The fact that my initial thoughts were how I might be able to lie in order to avoid the consequences of my actions. As I flew back home, my remorse was not for my actions or what I did to you. Rather, I felt sorry for myself for getting caught and destroying my marriage. All I could think about was whether I could come up with some type of story that might convince you that nothing had happened between Jeff and myself. I know now that my continued lies are what make it hard for you to ever trust me again. Deep down I knew that you had found out about Jeff. But even then, I was not thinking of you or how I had hurt you. My only thought was how I could avoid the consequences that I deserved. As soon as I got home, I had the opportunity to confess everything to you and to tell you I was sorry. But, I only thought of myself and tried to avoid the consequences of my actions. I was weak. I tried to lie. And, in doing so I continued to betray you. The whole way home, I told myself that I could deceive you. I thought that I might be able to convince you that I had met Jeff at the conference and we were just renewing our friendship. I thought that, if necessary, I would confess to you what happened in Jeff's room when you caught me while pretending that this was the first time we had gotten together. I deluded myself and thought that if I could hide or minimize my betrayal from you, we could continue our happy marriage. I forgot that a good marriage must be built on trust as much as on love. In my own selfish view of the world, I could not understand that by trying to lie to you, I continued to hurt you and our marriage. I grasped at any straw to try to conceal my betrayal. When I look back and realize that you knew I was lying to your face, I am ashamed of the pain that I must have caused you. When you confronted me with all the evidence of my lies and betrayal, I was in shock. You had never let me know about your suspicions. Deep down, I thought that I would be able to avoid the consequences for my actions. I made myself believe that my despair was because I was sorry for what I had done to you. I have come to understand, however, that the real reason for the despair was because I had been caught and now had to face the consequences. My concern was over what would happen to me, not over what I did to us. When you told me that you wanted to try to save our marriage, I jumped at the chance. I would have agreed to anything that you wanted. But even then, I did not do it for us. I did it for me. I wanted to find a way to salvage our marriage so I could avoid the consequences. I wanted to get back to where I was happy. I decided that if I couldn't have a loving marriage, I would accept pretense of a marriage. I was convinced that if we were together, I would be able to get you to love me again. I didn't think about how I hurt you. I told myself that I could live without your love, respect, or trust. I was wrong. I expected that living with you would be hard at first. I knew that you were still deeply angry with me. I told myself that it would change over time and that at some point your hurt would fade to the point where we could deal with it. It wasn't perfect, but I hoped that, over time, I would be able to change your feelings for me. But, this is not happening. I am afraid that our remaining together is a mistake because it is not leaving you the opportunity you need to heal. I thought that having S with you would help you to forgive me so I tried to entice you in every way that I could. I wore sexy clothes around the house and tried to do it with you whenever possible. I hoped that the intimacy might help you get over the pain. But I was wrong. Yes, we did have it frequently. But we never once made love. To put it simply, you used me. I was a toy. A plaything to be brought out whenever you felt a need for physical release. Yes, you treated me politely and kindly and were considerate enough to bring me to finishing as well, but you never once gave me any indication that you were beginning to love or trust me. After a while, your attitude towards me began to affect me. You never hurt me and were civil to me in most respects, but your attitude never changed. You remained aloof and hid your emotions from me. You continued to shut me out. You told me that you weren't ready to face the mess that I had made of our marriage. It was your eyes that gave you away. Every time we were together, I looked into your eyes to see if I could find any feeling for me there. But, your eyes were cold. There was no love or warmth for me. I was an object. A whore bought for your pleasure. I meant nothing to you. It was when things didn't change that I began to despair and that despair turned into hopelessness. For a time, I became convinced that I deserved whatever you did to me. 
I totally lost any shred of self-respect that I may have had. I know that you saw the hell that I was going through and I began to believe that you were taking pleasure in my suffering. It was at that point that my attitude began to change. I started to climb out of the hole that I had dug for myself. I started to really examine what I had done to us. Every day I examined and re-examined our lives to find out what had gone wrong. I held my motives up to mirror and I was very ashamed of what I had done. But I also took a look at your actions and didn't like what I saw. You see, I finally started to question your actions in all of this. I realized that your actions didn't match up with your statements that you loved me. I began to realize that maybe I wasn't alone in taking our love for granted. I became convinced that your actions were a conscious effort to punish me. You didn't need to hold the affair over my head. I did it for you. Phil, in this letter, I have tried to finally answer why I had my affair. But I have questions for you as well. Why didn't you fight for me, you bastard? When you confronted me with the evidence of my affair, you told me that you had suspected me from the first night of the affair. You told me that you had called my hotel room a number of times that night and that you knew I didn't get back to the room until very late. You knew that I was lying to you when I told you that I had come back to my room right after dinner. Why didn't you confront me with my lies and demand that I tell you where I had been? You documented my lies to you over the week of the first convention, but you never once confronted me with my lies. I am not trying to blame my behavior on you, but you need to examine your actions as well. To be brutally honest, I cannot tell you whether I would have confessed to you if you had confronted me with my lies that first night. I would like to think that I would have confessed, but any statement like that is self-serving. But, I do know that your confronting me would have prevented me from taking the affair any further. Your confronting me would have shown me that my actions when I am away do affect you. If nothing else, I would have been scared away from getting together with Jeff again. Similarly, you knew of the emails between Jeff and I the whole time. You knew that Jeff was pursuing me and you made no efforts to stop it. You read my emails, you knew that I was reluctant to get back together with Jeff and tried to tell him that it was a bad idea. But you just sat there and let him wear me down, never giving me any sign that anything was wrong or any support to my struggle to resist Jeff. During the six months I was corresponding with Jeff, I did feel guilty. I watched your behavior very carefully for any sign that you suspected me. You totally hid your suspicions from me. You treated me in the same loving manner and never once let me suspect that you knew what was going on. Finally, why did you refuse to go to the October convention with me? You knew that Jeff was planning on seeing me there. I begged you to go with me because I was afraid of what would happen if you were not there. But you blew me off. You deliberately set me up to find out if I would cheat on you again. You could see that I was weak when it came to refusing Jeff. Why didn't you help me? I needed your help to stop me from making an ass of myself and you were too bust gathering evidence. I thought I was your best friend. Doesn't that mean you give me help when I need it? Did our marriage mean so little to you that gathering evidence was more important than trying to save it? If you love me as much as you say you do, why did you stand aside and let me throw our love away? You need to know that by your actions, I have lost my trust in you as well. Phil, until you examine your motives in this whole mess, I don't know if it is possible to save our marriage. You tell me that you love me and want to save the marriage, but I don't see it from your actions. Not only did your failure to confront me contribute to the scope of the problem, your refusal to deal with the issue after the fact has hurt me more than you can know. I know you have been hurt, but damn it, I hurt too. I am not playing your game anymore. You need to make a decision on what you want. I hurt you during my affair, but you must make an effort to understand how much you have hurt me as well. I have done a lot of soul searching and I have told you how I feel about my affair. Examining my behavior has not been easy for me because I can see where I acted terribly. But you need to make that same effort. If it makes you feel any better, know that I will deeply regret my actions for the rest of my life. I had everything that I could ever want and threw it away for a few hours guilty pleasure. I know that I hurt you more than I can ever understand and I will always regret that. But if we are to continue our marriage, we need to move forward. I cannot and will not live my life in a loveless marriage while you bottle up your feelings. I cannot accept living like this anymore. The only way our marriage will survive is if we are both willing to work hard to get past the events of the past year. I know that my affair was the event that precipitated this crisis in our marriage, but I have come to believe that my affair was only a symptom of a much deeper problem with our marriage. I admit that I had lost sight of what was important to our marriage. I think you lost sight of what was important too. We both have become selfish over the past few years and have placed working on our marriage beneath other priorities. Neither of us has acted like best friends. I don't just want to get back to where our marriage was before my affair. I want us to get back to where we were when we first got married. I miss having you as my best friend as much as I miss having you as my husband and lover. 
Saving our marriage needs action from both of us. I cannot do it alone. We need to start the process of forgiving and healing. I need to know that you have the ability to accept my apology and forgive me for the pain I caused you. You also need to explain your actions to me and I need to discover if I can forgive you. When you confronted me, you told me that we had a great marriage. We both need to decide whether that marriage is worth fighting for. For I have learned that this is not a battle that either of us can fight alone. I want you to know one thing. The past year has given me a lesson that I will never forget. I have learned the high cost of cheating and I will never make that mistake again. If you do not want to try to save our marriage, I will understand. I know that I may have hurt you beyond your ability to forgive. If that is the case, I will not contest a divorce and will walk out of your life. It is the least I can do for you for all of the trouble that I have caused you. I will always regret the destruction of our love and regret what might have been. I can only hope that it will make me a better partner in any future relationship I may find. But, I hope that you still love me enough to work to save this marriage. If this is what you want, we need to get help to work through our problems. We need to see a counselor that can help us rebuild our trust and love. I know it won't be easy, but if we love each other enough, we can rebuild what we once had. I hope that I am not leaving you for good, but we both need time alone to think. Please take this time to consider the last year as thoroughly as I have. I need you to make a final decision one way or the other on whether you are ready to make an effort to save our marriage. I would like to tell you to take all of the time you need, but I cannot wait forever and neither can you. You can call me at my office once you have made your decision. But until you make a decision, I ask that you not contact me or try to see me. Know that whatever happens, I will always remember our love and wish that this had never happened.